In today's video, we'll talk about such a powerful tool that you really must be familiar with if you're a software engineer. I started using Obsidian a few months ago, completely, completely changed the way I work, the way I write code, remember code, learn new topics. It's just a life changer. So let's talk about what Obsidian is, how to use it, why people are obsessed with it and specifically developers, what makes it so powerful and how it can make your life way better. If for some reason you're not subscribed yet, then don't be shy, smash the subscribe button and let's get started. So for this video, I'm going to assume you're a developer, but I believe even if you're not a developer, then you'll be able to follow along and understand almost everything that I'm presenting. So what you see on the screen currently is the Obsidian app. And you can see it's a very similar experience to Notion, or if you've used any note taking app, then it's pretty similar to what you know, right? So you have your checklists, you have your various properties that you can play with. Now, even though it looks pretty fancy, what we currently have on the screen, actually behind the scenes, if I look at the source file, it's simply a markdown file. So the properties that we saw in the top, this thing over here, for example, status in progress. This is just a YAML property where we see it's status and then in progress. If I change it to something else, then it'll change in the other view as well. What we have over here on the top is YAML, but everything else in this file is simply markdown. Now here's where it becomes interesting. So first of all, I want to show you that if I look at the underlying file, then you can see that all this is is a markdown file that's stored on my computer. When I go ahead and open an Obsidian Vault, what I'm actually opening is just a folder that's sitting locally on my computer. I own all the files. Everything that I change is in plain text and I can go ahead and upload it to GitHub or to the cloud, store it somewhere to back it up if I want. It's free and I own it completely. So behind the scenes, all we have are markdown files and various other files and assets and pictures and videos, whatever you want, you can store inside it because it's just files in your file system. But here is where it becomes insane. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration of things that you can do. So over here, I'm opening what's called the graph view. So as you can see up here, it says graph view. And each one of these dots represents a note inside my Obsidian vault. Now let me zoom in on some area over here. So for example, you can see I have a note called domain centric architecture. You can see that this note is related to domain centric, to domain centric architecture and to two notes over here as well. So opening the note, you can see that all I have over here is I just pasted Bing's definition for domain centric architecture. But what you can notice is that down here in the linked mentions, you can see that I'm linking to this note from multiple other notes. So over here, you can see I have five mentions from four different notes. Now, if I go to one of the notes, for example, this domain centric architecture note. So over here, you can see opening and closing brackets and in between the name of the note that I want to link to. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking to yourself, what the heck is this syntax? Well, here's where Obsidian really, really shines. So similar to Visual Studio Code, where you have a big ecosystem of extensions that you can install, in Obsidian, you have what's called plugins. You have the core plugins that are built by the Obsidian team for the Obsidian app or Obsidian editor. And you also have community plugins. These are created by the community. It's open source. So you can see the underlying implementation of each one of these plugins. And you can go ahead if you want to install one of these extensions, then you can simply click on the extension, click install, and it'll be added to your vault, very similar to the extension experience in Visual Studio Code. Now, what can you do with these extensions? This is where it becomes pretty incredible. So this page that we randomly opened is from one of my online courses. Now, what we have over here is some metadata. And what we have down here is actually the presentation that I give for this subsection. If I go ahead and open the advanced slides community plugin, then I can see over here the preview for what the slide will look like. Now, each one of these lines is the separation between two slides, meaning that if I click over here, then it'll take me to the next slide, right? Now, just to show off a few more plugins to show you how powerful this is. So as you can see, what we have over here is the background image it comes from Unsplash. If I want to replace the image or when I created the slides, then there's another community plugin that allows me to search on Splash Photos. So all I do when I want to choose a background is I open that plugin 
And over here, I'm talking about focus. So I probably wrote focus. And you can see all I did, I took the first image and this is what I'm using for the background. If I want something else, so let's imagine that this is the one that I choose. Then I can go ahead, take this image, replace it with the existing image. And now this is the background instead. So you can see how creating slides using Obsidian can be pretty insane. And it's not like the presentations that you build can't look impressive or high quality. Before we continue, I want to remind you that I have three comprehensive courses on Dome Train. So if you enjoyed this video, then alongside subscribing, make sure to check out these courses. Now back to the video. Another community plugin that exists is called Database Folder, which gives you the following possibility. So as you can see, I'm looking at the getting started with clean architecture course. And down here, I have the curriculum. The curriculum is using the database folder community plugin. And what this plugin does is it goes ahead and it scans all the files in the folder that it's in recursively. And it presents it over here. Currently the font is very big, so it's not very readable. But what it gives me is the status of each one of the subsections where I can go ahead and update it from edited to film to maybe refilm, etc. Okay, now here's where it becomes really cool and especially for us developers. So what we can do is for each one of the columns, we can write custom JavaScript that the output will be put in the cell itself. So what I have is for each one of the files, the name, the text over here goes through some JavaScript that outputs the name of the subsection to here and the section number to here. So I don't need to go and update anything manually. I simply go to this file. And if I want to add an exclamation mark in the end, then all I need to do is click enter, go back to the curriculum. And over here, we can see we have the exclamation mark and the exclamation mark over here. What this also means is that when I switch this to maybe refilm, it went ahead to the file and updated the status here as well to maybe refilm. Okay, so that's just a small taste of community plugins and just how powerful this can be. I wanna take a step back and explain step-by-step step why I think Obsidian is so powerful specifically for developers. So for that, let's open a new folder over here and let's just call it Playground. Let's create a new file using Command N or Control N on Windows. And let's call this, for example, Linked List. Let's move this file to the playground folder that we just created. So, so move it to the playground folder. And because I never remember what the definition of a linked list is. So let's open up Bing. Let's say linked list definition, right? So Bing gave me here some answer on what a linked list is. Let's go ahead and copy what it gave us. And let's paste it over here inside Obsidian. Now, because this is simply Markdown, so currently I'm looking at the source, but if I look at the viewer, then I can see that everything is presented really nicely you know, the code blocks, the links, etc. Everything works as you would expect. Now, what I like about this is that currently we have a file, which is the single place in my entire Obsidian vault where I have an in-depth explanation with examples about linked list. Now, I may need to talk about linked lists in various courses that I teach. So in each one of the courses where I want to talk about a linked list, all I need to do is go to that specific file. And over here, I can go ahead and say linked list like so. And then very similar to an IDE experience, I can go ahead and navigate to the underlying symbol, or in this case, it's the note, and it'll take me to the underlying file. I don't need to create files inside specific folders, inside other subfolders and maintain or remember the hierarchy of what file sits where because I can go ahead and link all the various notes that have to do with one another to one another. Every time I learn something new about linked lists, then I can go over here and add it in the bottom. If I see, for example, that sometimes I need examples for linked list in C sharp and sometimes in C, then I can go ahead and say linked list C and then take this entire definition, put it under linked list for C, ask Bing for a C sharp example, copy the answer that we got, and then simply say C sharp, navigate over here, paste what Bing gave us. So now that I have two examples in two languages, then I can go ahead and split the screen, open one of them in one side, open the other one on the other side, and do some comparison between what it looks like in C, what it looks like in C sharp. And I'm sure you can imagine just how powerful this is when you go ahead and you update a schema of something in your code base from one version to another version, you wanna keep everything documented and in a well-organized way, then you can use Obsidian for this. So the combination of both being able to put code snippets natively in this application, 
plus where you can create specific notes for terms, terminology, concepts that you learn, where you can pour all the knowledge that you need about this specific topic inside this one note and you can link to it from anywhere is it really, really powerful. So the experience for me or the way I use Obsidian really feels like I'm just coding my notes. I feel like I have here an IDE where I can navigate to the definition of each one of these terms and I'm linking everything together and it's just very useful where I don't need to remember where anything is. I just need to remember something related to it and then I can go down the graph of the various notes until I get to where I want to get. The last thing I want to say for those who like keyboard shortcuts is that everything is really configurable, very similar to Visual Studio Code. So you have various keyboard shortcuts that you can use for configuring more or less anything. So from splitting the screen to different pieces to navigating between them, to playing with how the different panes change, everything is very configurable and the experience is similar to what you would expect from an IDE. So I encourage you, if you haven't yet, then give Obsidian a try. I'm not sponsored by Obsidian, it's just me legitimately part of this cult and I'm trying to convince you to join the cult as well. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Make sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.